It's Friday fight night and what could be the domestic fight of the year. Jamie Moore's walking tall. He's the British line middleweight champion. The nation's number one has been involved in some of the most dramatic and exciting fights in recent years. Matthew Macklin is the challenger. He's captured five fans' imagination. Victory tonight would raise him to a new level. It's been a long time in the making. Tonight is the night when Jamie Moore and Matthew Macklin sort it out once and for all. Who will be the British light middleweight champion? Well, this is where it's all happening. It certainly caught the, uh, the public's imagination. Queuing up amazingly four hours before the main event got underway. Those are the lucky ones with the tickets. The fight sold out in just 72 hours. And promoter Frank Maloney says he could have sold it out four times over. Not a seat to be had. This place is divided. Macklin or Moore, who will it be? Well, hi, uh, good evening from Manchester. It's uh, rapidly becoming the uh, fight capital of Britain. Not only the Lonsdale Belt of State, but also uh, who can walk tall, the bragging rights in a city where both these fighters train. Uh, the newly retired Johnny Nelson is, uh, is here, as always, uh, safely this side of the ropes from uh, now on in. Uh, also here tonight, a special guest who knows these two fighters better than pretty much anybody. He's been ringside celebrating many of his lifelong friends, Jamie Moore's big night in the ring. He spars in the same gym as Matthew Macklin. He's always there with the odd uh, word of advice. Friend, gym mate, we know him best as the two-time world champion, Ricky Hatton. Uh, good evening, Ricky. Uh, I guess split loyalties for you tonight. Yeah, I, I so wished this fight wasn't second place. You know, I've, I've known Jamie Moore since I was uh, 16 years of age. Uh, obviously, I share the gym now and I've been mates for years for Matthew Macklin and... Uh, my two are mates are, uh, are going to be getting it on, really, and it's, uh, it's, it's a shame, really, because I think it's going to be an absolute brutal fight. Two of my mates absolutely knocking lumps out of each other, but uh, from a fight fan's perspective, uh, sensational fight. And like you say, the venue really isn't big enough, you know, you could have, you could have got four more, you could have sold it four times over. Ricky, we'll talk more in just a couple of moments' time. Ed Robinson has been looking ahead to the fight that some people say is simply too close to call. It's a fight that simply had to happen. I've been ready for about 18 months for Jamie Moore. I just hope he's ready for me. It's not a prayer that he's taking the British title. Jamie Moore against Matthew Macklin in a sensational pairing for the Lonsdale belt. He is strong and he's, you know, he's a come forward fighter and he's a good body puncher, but so am I. And I believe I'm stronger than him and I'm a better body puncher than him. I've been made mandatory challenger, um, so Jamie had to fight me. And um, I think the fact that we're both very aggressive, we're both good punchers, uh, I think people think it's going to be a bit of a war. Moore's battled desperately hard to establish himself as British number one. Five knockdowns in a domestic dust-up we'll talk about all year. It's made me the fighter I am today, and um, all those experiences, I feel like a veteran. You know, I've been through a lot of stuff. With a young family to support, the aggressive Southpaw's in a rush to move on to the world stage. But first, he's got unfinished business with Macklin. He's got what I want and, you know, I'm standing in his way to bigger and better things, so, you know, it's a, there's a good rivalry there as well. He's a good fighter, you know, there's no doubt about it. Um, and I, I would say he's British level, but um, I, I believe that I'm beyond British level and that'll be the difference on the night. Across town from Moore's Salford base, Macklin's been planning his title assault at the Manchester gym he shares with Ricky Hatton. I think a lot of the action will be, you know, hooks, uppercuts, body shots, you know, and, and that's what people like to see. And um, I think it's going to be a hell of a fight. Macklin's boyish good looks mask a fiercely competitive nature. I think Jamie Moore winning the British title will be the big step up that I've sort of been craving for quite a while now. He's an exceptional prospect, but has he met his match in more? I just cannot see how he can beat me. I only think that I could lose this fight, and uh, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm the British champion. You know, I'm proud to be the British champion, and, and there's no way that he's going to come and take the belt away. 
Jamie Moore with the uh, the Lonsdale belt, which he now owns after winning it and the, defending it three times. Ricky, it's not often I see you really excited about watching a fight, uh, and tonight I get the sense you are excited. Yeah, we're very excited. It's a sensational fight. You've got two lads, up and coming lads, you know, that are hoping to go on to bigger and better things in the prime. You know, uh, great, fantastic styles, crowd pleasing styles, and it can't it can't fail to be anything but an exceptional fight. You've been in the gym with with Matthew Macklin. How's he been looking in the gym, and, and what sort of preparation has he been putting in? Well, he's been at our gym two years now, and he's been looking. You know, as every month that goes by, he's been looking better and better, stronger and stronger. You know, we're developing all the time, and. Um, you know, I can't speak uh, more highly of Matthew Macklin. I think he really is, you know, win or lose this fight. You know, he definitely is one for the future. Billy Graham is the, is the man who coaches you, coaches Matthew as well. Have you seen a big improvement in, in Macklin since that? I have, yeah. I think when he first um, turned professional, he was a little bit straight back, a little bit upright, but now he's got a little bit more rhythm to him, a little bit more lateral movement, better footwork. He's improved all round, really, and uh, it's a good job he has done that, you know, because he's, it's all, all his... Um, all his uh, tactics and all his, his talent is going to be put to the test tonight, believe you me. Well, uh, Johnny, let's talk tactics right now because you've been investigating where this fight could be won and lost. Tonight, two hungry fighters meet in a fascinating clash of crowd-pleasing styles. Jamie Moore's already won the Lonsdale belt outright, and Matthew Macklin simply can't match him for experience. Battle-hardened Moore's proved himself time and time again in brutal title fights. While Macklin's still largely untested, and this is his first major championship fight. Both have aggressive attacking styles, punctuated with energy-sapping body shots. Moore is likely to try and push Macklin back, use his strength and bully him up close. But Macklin may be stronger than expected and can adapt his tactics if not. Moore's been down before, but has a heart to roar straight back into action. Macklin's rarely looked troubled, but he's never faced a puncher like Moore before. It's intriguingly poised sure to be exciting and could ultimately come down to who wants it more. Do you think heart is a, a big factor there, Ricky, as Johnny was alluding to? Hugely, hugely. It could come down to the one who wants it more because, uh, you know, Jamie likes to go forward, Macklin likes to go forward, you know, so it's, it, it, I think it's going to be an absolute barnstormer of a fight and sometimes, you know, heart is definitely going to come into it at some point. Johnny, middle of the ring, tear up, you reckon? I think it's going to be a real humdinger. I've seen these two guys sit down and talk about the fight prior to it. I think that is going to make, be the main key, heart and desire and confidence. Moore is very, very confident. Michaelin, we want to see him grow into a confident fighter. I hate to do it to you, knowing both, mates with both, but who's, <laughs> who's going to win? Uh, you know what, I, I really do have to say, in all honesty, it really is a 50-50 fight. It really is a 50-50 fight. Go on, but, say uh, can say it, <laughs> No, I think it is a 50-50 fight. You know, Jamie has never looked as well as he has done recently. And Matthew, knowing him in the gym, how he's improving, how he's coming on, how hungry he is and how bad he wants it, it, uh, you know, it could go either way. You know, I keep chopping and changing my mind, so unfortunately <laughs> I'm going to sit on the fence for this one. Johnny, everybody's arguing about it. Come on, who's going to win? I'll put my neck on the line. Success breeds success. And Michael in the, in the gym with this fella sat next to me, a trainer in Billy Graham. Billy Graham knows exactly what he's doing. If Billy Graham's influence wasn't there, I'd have gone for ball. But I'm going for Michael. We can see he's already uh, sweating up there. Matthew Macklin, Birmingham, training in uh, Manchester. He could only get 49 tickets for this fight, um, as opposed to Jamie Moore, who's got 500 of his uh, supporters in here. Uh, that could be an issue. Uh, we'll wait and see. Our uh, commentators, Jim Watt and Adam Smith, first our MC, Mike Goodall. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and the viewers joining us live and exclusive on the Sky Sports Friday Fight, good evening and welcome. If you join us for tonight's main event, please welcome to the ring the challenger for the title from Birmingham, Matthew Macklin.
So here we go in this uh, fabulous British title showdown. A quite crackling atmosphere here in Manchester, entering the cauldron, Birmingham's Matthew Macklin. Talented, skilled and hungry. Time to step up as we find out how good he really is. Many believe, Jim, he's a star in the making. Yeah, well, well, he's uh, the hottest prospect probably in British boxing at the moment, but is he still a prospect or is he the finished artist? Well, because to lift the title tonight, he's going to have to be the finished artist. He's never been in this situation before at this level. Jamie Moore has several times. It's a big, big ask, but everybody says it's a 50-50 fight, and I agree with them. I think if this comes down to who is the hardest, he might have the edge, but this man will not lose his title easily. Jamie Moore, who says let's rock and roll every time he comes to the ring, never lets us down. Ladies and gentlemen, now please welcome to the ring the current light middleweight champion of Great Britain, Jamie! domestic light middleweight champion who's made the Lonsdale belt his own. He's put his heart and soul into this sport. Pretty, fiery, an accomplished box fighter with so many fans. He's accepted this mandatory, extreme confidence and self-belief or slightly foolhardy at this stage. Well, it just shows he behaves as a fighter and a champion should behave. He has the Lonsdale belt outright, he's taken the British title as far as he needs to take it. Everything to lose tonight, nothing to gain. A lot of fighters in his shoes would have given up the British title and started chasing other titles. The fact that he's here tonight facing such a dangerous challenger, he must really fancy this job. He must be sure he's capable of hanging on to that Lonsdale belt. One of the tightest title fights on paper in a long, long time. Macklin is three years younger. He does have the height advantage and may be strong at light middleweight. Both inside, 11 stone more. Macklin, 10, 13, 8. He's got the reach too. Could all be about strength. The experience with Jamie Moore, a brave of seven years, more fights, more rounds. And look at that knockout percentage. Not much between them. And they both bang hard to the body. Have a look at that. Not even the odds makers can split them. Both six to five on. If you ask 200 people in this industry, 100 would say more and 100 matches. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials appointed for this contest by the British Boxing Board of Control under their representative at ringside this evening, their chairman, Mr. Charles Giles, the steward in charge, Mr. Jeff Bolter, the timekeeper, Mr. Colin Roberts, and the judges scoring the contest on the 10 must system, Mr. Richie Davis from Kent, Mr. Phil Edwards from Preston, and Mr. Dave Paris from Leeds. When the action begins, the third man in the ring this evening, our referee from Paisley in Scotland, Mr. Victor Lochran. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Welcome to the George Carnell Leisure Centre here in Manchester for tonight's main event, exclusively live on Sky Sports Friday Fight Night. Promoted by Maloney Promotions and sponsored by Red Square, Trad Index, Stan James and BBE Boxing Equipment, who proudly present a contest of 12 three-minute rounds to decide the light middleweight championship of Great Britain and introduced in the boxers and firstly fighting out of the red corner he wears the dark green trunks and hails from birmingham he weighed in at 10 stone 13 and a half pound he brings to the ring an 18 fight professional record 17 wins 
13 wins by way of knockout with one loss. Please welcome the challenger for the title, Matthew Mackley. And across the ring in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks trimmed with black and white, he fights out of the city of Salford and weighed in at the limit weight of 11 stone exactly. He holds a 27 fight professional record, uh, 24 wins, uh, 18 wins coming by way of knockout with three losses. He's an outright winner of the Lonsdale belt, the current light middleweight champion of Great Britain defending his title tonight. Please welcome Salford's own Jamie. instructions to both boxers. Okay guys, you've had your instructions in the dressing room, remember, obey my commands at all time, defend yourselves at all time. God bless, let's do it. Touch gloves. What an intense stare. It's taken months to happen and everyone in the trade is split over this wonderful match for the British 11 stone title. The experience and southpaw skills of Jamie Moore against the orthodox strength and promise of Matthew Macklin. Two excellent operators, friendly out of the ring, bitterness inside, and do we have a thriller to live up to the hype? Well, obviously, someone will want to make an early impression at the moment. That looks to be Matthew Macklin, who's trying to come forward, trying to get Moore on the back foot, trying to land solid punch as soon as possible. Billy Graham, Macklin's trainer, says Moore will be very surprised by the strength of Macklin, that he's used to bullying opponents. And it could come down to this power. Body shots going in from Macklin. Moore has landed a couple of left hooks already. Macklin taking them well. Yeah, Macklin never down as a professional more has been on six occasions Luckily, his defense is letting him down as he backs off after his attack he's going to have to pay a bit more attention to his defense Moore by contrast as the chin down the shoulders are hunched always set to counter already a redness over Macklin's uh, left eye coming in Macklin Moore just waiting, tucking up behind that tight defence. Become a really accomplished box fighter, Jamie Moore. And Macklin at a new level for the first time. And Moore has the experience, he has the South Bosch dance of all. And you would think he would be using that, certainly in the first part of the fight, to his advantage. Aggression from Macklin. Moore seems unperturbed at the moment. I think Macklin has made an impression in his strength to begin with. He's a little bit reckless with his defences and he's too eager to make an impression. He's probably outworking Macklin a little bit in the opening round here, but taking a few too many chances, I think. Work rate from Macklin, who's done uh, 15 rounds on Billy Graham's body bell. Only Ricky Hatton's managed that distance so far. He's uh, so fit. Rick to the bone, Macklin. Moore trying to put a bit more thought into his boxing than Macklin. Macklin will not allow that, will not give him the chance to settle. An impressive opening round for Macklin. It's close, it's hard. But I think Macklin so far has been that little bit more impressive. Already, after only a round, you can feel the heat, the intensity in there. Good start from Macklin. Not undaunted by the big challenge. Welcome back. It started off extremely well. The uh, Billy Graham camp, Macklin's been with two years now and there's improvements. Yeah, there's definite improvements, but he was very keen to make an early impression. 
Moore has the experience, the, the, the savvy. He knows this is going to be a long, hard fight. So he just tucked up nice in the opening round. Didn't take any clean punches. I thought Macklin's round. The red trunks of the 27-year-old Salford Southpaw, Jamie Moore. Sick British title fight and the Irish green. That's the roots of Matthew Macklin. Although he uh, comes from Birmingham and his training base is in Manchester. Fights for a lot of people, but the uh, crowd very much pro more here. Look at these body shots from Macklin. He's made his intentions early and more backed up on the ropes. That little exchange in Macklin had the last word. It's a little bit early to start looking for signs like that. But then again, his defence is what's going to let him down tonight. That composure there from Jamie Moore, who may have the edge in speed. Some feel Macklin is a little slow and wide with the hooks. He's like a man possessed, Macklin, though. Yeah, well, he, he obviously feels that he can fight at this pace for 12 rounds. Moore is a bit more conservative. He's catching punches, he's thinking about pacing. But Macklin making him fight every second here. Cracking action already in this uh, domestic tussle. Again, Macklin pulling his chin away, asking for trouble. Good job from Jamie Moore. Solid. And again. I think there was an effect from that jab. I think Macklin felt that that was bang on the chin. He's 117 of 18, Macklin. But uh, he's never faced anyone like Jamie Moore in a professional ring. He's also using up an awful lot of steam here. He's putting far too much into this. I don't know if he believes that an early finish is on the cards. I don't think it is. I think this is going to be a long, grueling fight. And for me, I would like to see him calm down a little bit. He's using up too much. Is this sensible, educated, technical and thoughtful material from Jamie Moore? Still blocking a lot of these punches, but finding the target with the counters. Again, Macklin out working him in this round, but not finding the target this time. Just looks a little loose, Macklin. Being caught, especially by the jabs. One apiece. Six minutes already. I hope you're enjoying this. We certainly are. Look at that body shot statistic. Macklin. Come on, get that washed out. 13 for Egypt. Yeah, I think that's understandable because I think Macklin's the one initiating most of the attacks. But Moore is covering up. He's catching a lot of the punches, at least partly blocking them. He's trying to put a bit more thought into his box. You can see these thumping shots from Macklin. That's obviously his plan. But I just feel that he's using up an awful lot of steam. It's nice in fights like this if you can nick a couple of rounds into the bank just to give you a little cushion. But he's putting everything he's got into the opening two rounds. Moore a bit more conservative, conserving his energy that little bit. Maybe his style is more suited to the 12 rounds here. Third round. Not the uh, luckiest for Jamie Moore. He's lost three times and twice in this session. Once to Ozzy Duran when he had a uh, problem with a hip and uh, then to Michael Jones in the second of their trilogy. He was disqualified for a punch after the break, and Michael Jones couldn't continue. Body shot from Macklin, and Jamie Moore just looked there and acknowledged that. That was a good shot, that one got behind the elbow, right onto the rib cage. And like the good pro he is, he didn't show much, but I'm sure Jamie felt that one. I just feel that Macklin is throwing too many power shots. He should be throwing jolting little shots, 
just to try and open up an opponent, but he's winding up every punch, every punch is full power. He cannot do this for 12 rounds. Good, clean shot there, picked by Jamie Moore. But back comes Macklin, again working the ribs, trying to rise open the defence and expose any vulnerability in the Moore makeup. Yet Macklin still prepared to do it the hard way. But you have to credit Moore for his toughness that he's shown so often in the past. I know he's been stopped a couple of times, but there's reasons for that. I think Macklin is gambling everything in the early stages here. All that experience from Moore. Both men and both camps predicting about a seven or eight round stoppage win for their man. Well, Macklin's punches are looking clumsy already. I just really feel he's taking a huge chance with these tactics. He should be looking for a bit more accuracy. It's all effort and power. And the first signs of it's not working. A sizzling, frenetic pace set by Macklin. Jamie Moore is taking his time. Well, it's no use winning rounds on effort if it's taking more out of you than it is the other guy. And I'm wondering if that's what's happening here with Macklin. These are better punches now. Digging in, it means so much to Matthew Macklin. His whole boxing career so far rests on this night. Is he skillful enough? I, I sometimes wonder, is he putting enough thought into his boxing? He just wants to blast through those defences. There's not enough guile in what he's doing. I, was, I prefer doing a lot of work from Magdalene, but I like those defences and his accuracy. Taking off balance. And then the point is Corner of Jamie Moore. Oliver Harrison. Who's uh, adapted more in the last few years. Well, Macklin put a lot of work into that round. But the move kept tight. Combined with lots of accurate counters. So well poised already. So much clean action. Victor Lachlan, the referee. Hardly anything to do. And the crowd are loving every minute. Matthew Macklin. The Irish middleweight champion. Is he naturally that bit stronger and tougher and harder? Good shot from Jamie Moore. You just can't pick a winner already. This is every bit as tough as we imagined it would be. Moore still got more control of his boxing, but Macklin prepared to take the chances. Shoving more off there. Trying to show the natural strength in that five foot ten inch frame. Probably weighing near a 12 stone on the night, Macklin. Than the 11 stone he was to make weight yesterday. And you just wonder if the experience Moore has in these 12 round fights will tilt things in his favour. Macklin can't possibly keep the pace going that he set in the first couple of rounds. Jamie Moore was telling me this week that he believes that Macklin will fade after four or five and that making light middleweight would have been difficult for him. I just worry for Macklin that there's not enough thought in what he's doing. It's all effort, it's all power punches, winding everything up, putting everything he's got into these early stages. See, look at Moore here, he's thinking what he's doing, he's nice and compact, nice and tight, thoughtful. Uppercut from Macklin. Bit more thought now from Macklin, he's been throwing the uppercuts since the, the start of this round, I wonder if the corner have suggested that. It's ironic that Macklin was the better amateur, the ABA champion, and Moore has learnt his trade very much in the professional ring. Can't buy experience. Well, 
but the work that Macklin has put into the four rounds so far, you would like to think he's made some real impression on Moore. I'm not sure he's done that. What a mighty effort from Matthew Macklin in the first third of this British title fight. But Moore, again composed and calm, doesn't look worried. Terrific stuff, as we thought it would be. The work all the time comes to yeah. Well, Matthew Macklin's only ever lost once in the ring against Andrew Facey on points, and since then, he's won uh, eight in a row. There's the record to date, still just 24. And those eight inside five rounds, he's only been past six once. Too much steam, too early, question mark. See, I think so. Part of there being a championship class boxer, you learn to, you don't have to fight three minutes of every round to win that round. You just have to do more than the other guy. When you know the second half of fight is going to be hard, don't make the first half hard. And I think that's what Macklin's been doing. He's getting results, he's winning rounds. He's using an awful lot of steam doing it. There was a feeling within the uh, industry that Macklin wanted this fight more than more. I think uh, the champion feels that he's not had the respect he's owed, and I think that's fired him up. Well, I think the fact that Moore has nothing to gain from victory here, but everything to lose. I mean, he has an enormous heart taking this fight. Plenty of champions were just have moved on, give up the titles, moved on. So obviously he fancies the job. Still a bit more control. Macklin has dropped his pace a little bit, which is a uh, good sense. A bit more selective. Good defence from Moore. Aiming for the quality shots and uh, trying to save his energy, maybe. He took apart David Walker in this very ring last year in uh, four precise rounds. Whether he believes he should be fighting at European or world level. Yeah, well, when you've won the British title and the Lonsdale belt, it is time to move on. It's a pity for Moore. That hasn't happened yet. But uh, nobody here tonight's complaining, are they? Macklin cutting home with the left hook again. He's only sold 49 tickets. That's all he was allowed. But there's a bit of noise from the Birmingham section. Wayne Elcott. The middle went up to support him too. Ready, I go, I go. Just signs that things are going to become a bit untidy. Yep, the mark on the mark on the low mark on his right eye. Yep, he's bruised up and he does tend to mark Macklin. Victor Lockwood just having a word with Jamie Moore, who can uh, let the punches stray. <laughs> Such a spirited effort from Macklin, but is the tide turning? Got another round where he has thrown so many punches, pushed himself forward. I thought from the opening bell his defences were going to be a problem, and the more you tire in this kind of fight, it's going to become a bigger problem. Moore, by contrast, his chin's down, his hands are up. I will get caught cleaning with that one. Yeah, nice uppercut. That hurt Jamie Moore. And Macklin piles on the pressure. Coming up to the end of the fifth. Yeah, the big round for Macklin and the effort he's put out here. How long can he keep this pace going? Friday fight night, next Friday night. Lee Haskins moving up away, takes on Shafiwa Munya as he bids for a second Commonwealth bantamweight title friday 10 o'clock sky sports one what a great fight we have for you tonight and looking around ringside people seem to be scoring rounds differently as well some feel more might be ahead some mackling it's that sort of fight there was so much love and thrown Can move defences and his technique. He's using his technique a bit more than Macklin. Macklin's on for brute strength, winding up the power shots. Almost every punch he throws is a power shot. 
uppercut from Jamie Moore, who just believes that he's the more superior fighter. He's got more uh, tricks, better shots in the arsenal, and more control. Yeah, well, there's been more control. He's been more compact all the way through, whereas Macklin's been the one prepared to take the chances. He obviously feels he's physically stronger than Moore, and he wants that to, to count. Plenty of time left. Macklin presses forward again and backs Moore up. Good body shot there. Back comes the champion. Fighting fire with fire. See, again, Moore fighting from the crowds, the hands up. Thinking about defence. Little bursts of punches. It's a head, boys. It's really the work rate of Macklin that's giving Moore his biggest problem. So if that starts to subside, you wonder if his experience is going to take over. Some blood from the nose of Jamie Moore. The uh, eye damage just underneath the right eye for Macklin. And that uppercut won't have helped that. Mick Williamson, expert cutsman in the red corner, will have to tend to that again. See, you start looking for signs. Has the snap left Macklin's punches yet? Or do they still have that power? Because if the snap leaves and Moore can start taking some more chances, he could be in big trouble. It's been a massive gamble for Macklin, but he's still pumping the punches out, still doing that in work rate. It's so, so gritty of Macklin. The desire. He lives boxing 24-7. Him and his little brother Seamus, they're experts in the sport. Well, again, I'm impressed with the accuracy and the defence of Jamie Moore. Macklin, again, giving every ounce he has, but not an awful lot of thought behind it, I'm afraid. Ricky Hatton, the friend of both of them, is right. This is brutal, toe-to-toe -to -toe stuff. Little bump just under Jamie Moore's eye as well to add to the drama here. Well, a lot of clever work in this round from Jamie Moore. He's used his experience, he's used his skill. That was a tough, tough round. This crowd are loving it, and this is the reason why. Only one punch on our computer in it on the ones landed, the quality. Look at that. This is every bit as good as we dreamed it would be. Two young men, crucial stages of their career, probably Macklin could uh, stand a defeat more than Moore, but you'd never guess it with what he's putting into this. Just a couple of signs in that round that uh, his punches didn't have quite the snap. Then he seemed to pull himself together and get back to the powerful shots again. But the little clever clips that uh, Moore was, was picking out from that tight of defence. That was impressive. That he used his experience in that round. Second half of an enthralling British light middleweight title defence of Jamie Moore. And as Jim has it, absolutely dead level. Yeah, well, even the punch stats had, had one punch between them. I've got nothing between them. Under British rules, three judges at ringside tonight. Phil Edwards, Dave Paris and Richie Davis. He was telling us last week how excited he was just to be here. Would have bought a ticket, I think. That goes for a lot of us. Well, this is probably the hottest domestic match in the country at the moment. Probably of the year, and it's shaping up. Could be fight of the year. Uppercuts from Moore. They've given him a great deal of success over the years. Macklin waving away. For the first time, Moore just finding a little bit of space to get his punches off. Not the same intensity in Macklin's work at the moment. He's standing at arm's length, which will suit the South Paul Moore. Back he comes again, though. Yeah, beautiful body shots. Just when he was looking disjointed, he comes on with another spurt. Fabulous, fabulous action. Oh, 
Oh, Macklin just fell up back a little there. And still prepared to, to drive himself on. Moore still has that bit more control, but not coming out with quite so many punches in this round, Moore. You can see how Macklin's worked on the body belt with Billy Graham, can't you? Side to side, but Moore comes out of the corner. This is a hard, hard fight, and who is the harder man? There's a good right hand from Macklin. Who felt that one? He actually dropped his hand so he could see where the next punch was coming from. He really felt that one. Took him nicely. Power from Macklin. Up comes Moore again. Oh, this is thrilling and so brutal. Who is going to outlast who in that? Good work from Macklin. End of the seventh round. Coming on strong. I have not seen such determination in a young man for a long time. I'm seeing Matthew Macklin tonight. They're very tired as he goes back to the corner. Crowd on their feet. Give me that cold water. Was that a round that has taken a good deal out of Jamie Moore? Well, that right hand certainly did. Good body shot. And a, that was the kind of glancing blow. That was the thumping shot. Just seemed to catch him on the ear. He dropped his hands there. He wanted to see where the next punch was coming from. Whereas normally he would cup his hands round his ears and duck and dive. I think that one stunned him, but he came back with good stuff. But another round where Macklin put so much into it. Jamie Moore breathing very heavily in the blue corner, but look at Matthew Macklin firing himself up. Johnny Nelson said in his preview, will it come down to who wants it most? A physical battle to rival any in Britain this year. and rubbing the head in a little bit there. But the uh, referee, uh, it's a rough fight, so I think he's quite happy not to be interfering too often. The sweat pouring off the dark green trunks of Matthew Macklin and also the red of Jamie Moore. Remember Macklin only ever been 10 rounds once against Andrew Facey when he was defeated. Moore has... Uh, been 12 rounds once, but he's trained more for this sort of championship distance. Well, for the first time, Moore just using a little half step back. Making Macklin miss wildly and countering. I wonder if we'll see some more of that. Macklin tired, he's on unsteady legs because he's tired, stumbling here and there. Moore could exploit that. Good uppercut from Matthew Macklin who's been sparring with uh, Brian McGee, the Irish Southpaw, to tune him up for Jamie Moore. And he ever fought one Southpaw before Moore as a pro. See, I think Moore should be thinking about initiating more attacks. He's on his back foot a lot. And these close rounds, maybe just sway it against them because Macklin is putting so much into this. Good shot. Look at this from Matthew Macklin. Tries to turn southport. He is so fit. And that was so a good left hook. That was a shaker. That caught him high in the head. And that has stunned him. Jamie Moore in a spot of butter again. He tries to come back. Great left cross from Moore. And now his wobble. Yet Moore come back with a lovely left hook and just stop Macklin in his tracks. See, both boys are so tired now, so obviously these hard punches have more of an effect. Single shots from Moore into the body 
but it's this work rate, this relentless style of Matthew Macklin. It's incredible. I don't think I've seen a fighter so fired up. He's taking the punch. He's coming right through the pain. Just will not be denied. Whatever Lure has come up with, Macklin has never been deterred. Just keeps coming. Yep. He gets caught, but he just walks forward. Another terrific round. his last claim, Jamie, you know it now. Come on, this is your cycle. You go back home with this cycle. <laughs> Oliver Harrison trying to G up his man. Well, just when you think uh, Matthew Macklin should be beginning to flag, he comes out with a burst of punching like that. Solid shot, which really troubled Lure. Caught him high in the head. Just seemed to rob him of his senses momentarily. Then he come back with a beautiful left hook of his own. Just to steady, there it was. Then he caught him with another one. But Macklin just prepared to take whatever pain comes his way. He is so fired up. What a fight this has turned out to be. Matthew's brother, Seamus, who's just behind us, is biting his nails. He's only 18, but he's got his life savings on his brother winning. Matthew says it's not very much, but the thought that counts. More fighting for his family. Son Mikey on the waistband of the trunks. And his uh, wife Colleen, who's pregnant again. They've got to just dig in now, so much. Well, the first move of the round from Macklin was a tired looking move. He's stumbling forward. It's as though he hasn't recovered in the minutes respite between rounds. He just stumbled into Moore. Is the pace going to tell on him? It's been an incredible pace he's set. Billy Graham looking on, a bit more concerned, and good work on the inside, up against the ropes from Jamie Moore. And now Macklin is swaying. How about this, Jim? This has been an incredible pace. Uppercuts now from Macklin. Left shot, Jamie Moore. Macklin crashes into the ropes. See, Moore should be looking to find himself some room. He's hurt Macklin, he wants to be stepping back. But back he comes oh, again. Look at this from Matthew Macklin. And Jamie Moore is backed up. What about this? Unbelievable. Well, this is the kind of exchange that can break either fighter's heart. Whoever comes out of this type of exchange may go on to victory, but there's no hints as to who that's going to be. Toe to toe, exchanging with each other in a dramatic fight. And we have no idea what's going to happen next. We've seen this before. Back it comes firing again. More beckons him in. Desire a plenty for Macklin. This is good work from Jamie Moore. Macklin's defences are scattered here. Looking disorganised, dishevelled Macklin and holds on. I think Macklin is just too proud for his own good. He looks sold out here, but he won't hold. He won't spoil. Too much heart here, not enough common sense for Matthew Macklin. Gambles it all again. More tired too, though. Body shots from Macklin. One of the rounds of the year. Anywhere in a domestic ring. Three more rounds to go, and it has been sensational. 
Well, you've heard me say in some of these, this type of fight, there's one round that just decides the outcome. I wonder if I've just watched that round. That sapped so much from both men. Full-blooded punches landing cleanly. Both took tons about and teeing off on the other. Incredible round that was. Macklin, even when he looks to have nothing left, back he comes again. Tenth round, and this British Lonsdale belt means so much to the pair of them. I mean, this is a fight, Jim, that would live in any era, wouldn't it? I mean, this is incredible. They have just not stopped punching from the first bell. Moore again trying to, to use a defence, use his skills a bit more. Macklin shaken by that one. Yeah, good punch from Jamie Moore. Cam Macklin. Hold on, dig deep. Or will he fall apart? Looking disorganised again, Macklin. He's just swaying all over the place, not even thinking about defence, Macklin. Oh, he has to go down. Finally, hit the tent. That's a push, no, that's a push. He stumbled down. A punch landed before and all there, but I think he actually pushed his shoulder. That's the fact that he. Collapsed to the canvas, it looks as though he has nothing left. Yeah, may not have been a knockdown legitimately, but was that the breakthrough for more? Seeing him go down, seeing him exhausted. And there's no snap in anything. And he comes back with a beautiful right hand. What training Matthew Macklin has done. Hats off to Billy Graham, Kerry Kay's in the team. Oh, that could be curtains. He won't get up from that. Fight's over, no celebration for Jamie Moore because the doctors will need to come in. That's the respect between them. And at the end of the war, it is Jamie Moore that comes through a quite phenomenal battle. But all our attention now is to Matthew Macklin, who gave us so much. And the doctors are straight in because it was a very heavy fall. Yeah, they've got the oxygen ready, they've removed the gum shield, they've put him out on his side in the recovery position. No signs of alarm as yet, but uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Jamie Moore obviously not in the mood to celebrate. A scene we've seen before in British boxing, a worrying time. The ambulance paramedics, they're all in, dealing very quickly. An excellent safety now. The British board make sure that all is well. And Macklin is down. And we just wait. Being turned on his side, and uh, there's concern in the crowd after such a, an epic, epic fight between the pair of them. And uh, it's good to see Jamie Moore just trying to calm everyone down here because there's so much respect and friendship between the pair. Yeah, and after such a, a brutal contest, I mean, it was uh, sportsmanship all the way. But uh, at this moment in time, we're just hoping and praying everything is all right with young Matthew Macklin. Yep, devastating for Macklin after he put so much into this. But uh, his health is the only thing that matters. Right now, Billy Graham at close hands with the paramedics. And they're just discussing what to do now they're calling for the stretcher and um, I think they're going to get him straight out of there we've seen some difficult scenes over the years with Spencer Oliver Paul Ingle and um, Valerie Odin recently but uh, he's an expert hands Jim yes they will uh, they're taking their time with him obviously there's, there's, administering oxygen while he's lying there they're already they'll have the ambulance ready they'll have contacted ahead to, to, to the hospital but uh, we're hoping it doesn't go as far as that I mean Matthew must be completely exhausted so for that reason alone they would keep him in the ring well, obviously experienced men will make a decision whether to keep him there a bit longer or is it time to move him? If it was a panic, I think they would have him out of there already. So, just keep hoping for the best. 
They did keep Spencer Oliver in the ring for some 15-20 uh, minutes after his fight with uh, Sergei Davikov and um, injected him with insulin to uh, reduce any swelling that may have occurred. His blood clots could be a problem. And after such a hard fight, Jim. Yeah, an exhausting fight. I mean, both men were exhausted, so obviously punches uh, have much more of an effect at this stage of a contest. It really is a worrying time. Yeah, tears at ringside from the Macklin supporters who um, look stunned. And uh, we just wait and hope because such a gruelling, gruelling fight. Well, it needs only a, a positive outcome health-wise. There's Seamus, his brother, they're so close. And uh, we've just been told by the camp that uh, he's, he's breathing. And uh, Well, the signs are good, the, the, the word we're getting from ringside, but uh, obviously treating it still very, very seriously. Some uh, extremely professional men in there and some very, very good cornermen too. Shattering this for Billy Graham and also for Ricky Hatton upstairs, his stable mate. And for Jamie Moore. who's defended his British title. But uh, no one, no one wanted an outcome like this. And there's his friend Ricky Hatton, best pals with both of them. And, um, well, there's tears welling up in his eyes. Very, very sad to see and Jamie Moore must be going through well who knows what the feelings are all sorts of emotions consummate professional Jamie Moore and they continue to keep Matthew Macklin in the ring until they've uh, Got him sufficiently on the stretcher, and the crowd applaud as they wrap Macklin up, and um, they'll be taking him to hospital very shortly, we would imagine. Here's the oxygen mask on Macklin. And the stretcher waiting. There's Jamie Moore going in to see him. Look at that. Well, Matthew is obviously responding. If Jamie's down talking, they're shaking hands. They're shaking hands. So, that is fantastic signs are to good. See. Signs are good. That is great to see. They shook hands, and now I think they're, they're even trying to talk in there. The oxygen mask still on Matthew Macklin. And, of course, he will be taken and tested and uh, all the medical routines will be carried out. But that was an encouraging sign, and we hope and pray that Matthew Macklin recovers fine. Yeah, but that, that was a, a happening sign, the fact that he was responding, speaking to Jamie Moore. Huge signs that things may be all right. Yeah, hand up again to the crowd. Exhausted and on his way to the best possible medical care. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Macklin. You'll be pleased to know that Matthew Macklin just regained consciousness there and did speak to Jamie Moore. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this week in Manchester there's been many standing ovations. I think this deserves the standing ovation of all this week. Please. Two great fighters. Absolutely. Well said, Mike Goodall.
the crowd applaud. Jamie Moore finally takes his applause. A tenth round knockout in a, uh, a fight that in Britain, well, unprecedented for many a year in terms of action, but uh, tempered with our thoughts and prayers with Matthew Macklin. Yeah, well, we can hope that it's uh, uh, mostly exhaustion from Matthew now. He put so much into this, and uh, just it seemed that the experience of Jamie Moore just gave him the edge at, at the end when it Ladies counted. Ladies and gentlemen, after 1 minute 29 seconds of round 10, the winner by technical count out and still the light middleweight champion of Great Britain, Salford Jamie Moore! I'll ask the steward in charge, Mr. Jeff Bolter, to present the Lonsdale belt to the still light middleweight champion of Great Britain, Jamie Moore! Well, we will keep you updated with uh, Matthew Macklin and his, uh, his progress. Our thoughts are with him, of course. Uh, we hope to speak to uh, Jamie Moore in just a, a couple of minutes' time. Well, it was a, a brutal fight. Uh, Matthew Macklin will update on his condition shortly. Um, Jamie Moore, the victor, the uh, British Lights middleweight title uh, still belongs to him. Uh, Ed Robinson is speaking to him behind the scenes right now. Well, Jamie, first of all, I'm sure our thoughts are with Matthew Macklin. Have you got mixed feelings now after a fight like that? About Matthew? Well, I said before, Andy, he was a quality fighter, and I said we should never be fighting for the British title. We should be fighting for the European. And I think on that performance, you've got to say, I think, because I believe I'm world class now, and um, I'd say he's, he's even edging towards world class. I mean, it was nip and tuck all the way. I think I was just ahead every single round. You know, he was giving me some good body shots, and I knew that was going to come, and we, we worked, me and Oliver worked on it. And I think you can definitely say he's European class. And he'll, he'll come back without a shadow of a doubt and fight for this um, British title. I mean, maybe he could fight Michael Jones, you know. Um, I'm going to give this title up now. I've, um, I've been at this level too long, and um, Frank Malone is going to engineer me towards a European, if not a world title shot, because after that, Ed, you know, I, I can't keep fighting like that. I've got three more years. I've promised my wife, Colleen, that I'll be done when I'm 30. And, um, yeah, I'll have to be done when I'm 30 because I can't keep fighting like that, man. How physically and mentally tough was it in there? Did he hurt you at all? Oh, he hurt me, you know, from the first round. But uh, I've always said before, I've got balls like a bull, you know, I just won't give up. And um, if, th if that was any other fighter in there, he'd have stopped him without a doubt because he was, he was hurting, you know. And I think he's he proved it in the past how hard he punches. But I stuck in there, and I was, I was one step ahead of him all the time, you know. I'm an intelligent fighter, but, but I'm, a, I'm an aggressive fighter, and, and it's hard to beat that sort of person. And hopefully Frank can get me a European or a world title shot in the near future. Hopefully Sky can back it now because I want to get my mortgage paid off, and I'm <laughs> done when I'm 30. <laughs> Did you speak to him afterwards as he came around yeah, in the ring? I congratulated him and I told him what a tough man he was. And, um, you know, he, he said the same about me. And, um, like I said, 100% he'll come back and win the British title. And for you, you're looking forward to the world title. Can you win that? Definitely. You know, I've shown there I've got the heart. Um, I'll, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll improve again after this. But, like I said, just said, Ed, I can't keep fighting like that. You know, um, Hopefully, um, I won't have to because that was the sort of fighter Ma Matthew was in. None of us took a ba backward step. I said it before, we'd be like two Mexicans in there, and it was. And, um, you know, I've proved that I can, I can stick it at the top level and um, it, I, 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 I win a world title and then get out on top. Well done, great fight. Yeah. Ricky, was that the fight you expected? It was and more, I think. Um, tonight, I felt proud to be able to call them two lads my mates. You know, they were, it was absolutely first class. Matthew Macklin just wasn't going to be denied. He just kept going, kept going. Jamie boxed a tremendously smart flight. Picked up, went, picked the time when to rest. Picked the time when to go for it. And probably that was the difference in the end. I think Matthew Macklin didn't quite pace the fight right. I think he, uh, he hit his, he started pushing his punches in the middle rounds. And in the first couple of exchanges in the tenth round, I turned around and said to Johnny, I said, I think it's over now. I think he's got nothing left. And. Uh, really brings a tear to me eye to see him go down that way and be stretching out like that and I just pray he's okay but congratulations to Jamie he was uh, he was class tonight Jamie
the atmosphere was was amazing early on. Uh, would adrenaline be a factor, do you think? Oh yeah, nervous energy was played a big part in, in Matthew Macklin's uh, approach to this fight. It came out like like a racing car. Uh, that fight reminded me, puts you in the mind of Jeremy McClellan, Nigel Benn, Michael Watson. Yeah, yeah, oh, those crack, crashing fights, unbelievable pace that he came out was with, and that's where he, he, he measured it wrong. He came out too fast, got towards the end, he had nothing left, he was fatigued towards the end. Whereas, uh, uh, whereas Jamie Moore did the right thing, he took top, he preserved his energy very, very well, he did the right thing, but Matthew Macklin, initially, the, how aggressive he was, the speed he came out with, the body shots he threw, he wasn't wanted to take a backward step, even when he got caught with strong thudding shots from Jamie Moore, he refused, he refused to step back. Ricky, did it surprise you just how strong Macklin was early on? Uh, not really, no, because I've, uh, I've sparred with him and it's like sparring with a bear at times, he's so physically strong. But uh, he come out of the traps like a greyhound, he really flew out. And in fact, you know, I had him maybe a couple of rounds up, just that it, it was ebbing and flowing, it was going one way and the next. You know, maybe Jamie could have been a couple of rounds up, but I think what it was, once it hit that 10th round, there was nothing left. It just didn't quite pace the fight right where Jamie did, and that what made the difference. We thought he maybe had burnt himself out in the first five or six rounds, but it, it got brutal in, in, around about round seven. You know, they both said it's going to be a, a brutal fight, and you never... Could have guessed how rough this fight was going to be. This was a real humdinger. This was two fighters, but that seriously believed they were the better fighter in the ring, and they were willing. They, they wanted to draw first blood, and it was. I've never seen a fight like that ever. You know, these guys who were hit, they were hurt. They still came back for more. Hit and hurt, and still came back for more. You just, your emotions were up, up and down. It was such an unbelievable, aggressive fight. Second to none. How did they keep going? when it's a fight like that? It's just heart, it's just pure heart. And, you know, and Matthew Macklin, you know, the, the, the courage he showed, Jamie would come back at it and with thunderous shots and he'd just come through it and he'd come through it. And, uh, but I think Jamie paced it right, you know, what he knew when to initiate his attacks, he knew when to back off and conserve a bit of energy, where Matthew was flat out and he may have got his nose in front, but really, you know, if you, if you don't pace it right, you know, you could be 11 rounds in front, but if you get beaten the last round because you've not paced it right, it's, it's you know, it's an, it's a shame, but... Was it a case towards the end that Macklin just had nothing more to give? Jamie Moore's experience won him that fight tonight. Uh, Matthew Macklin, it was totally drained. He had nothing left. And that was part of the reason why That's he ended up in that situation. See. It or wasn't it a nice thing way. to see. It was, it was, it was a thudding shot. The, Jamie Moore's shots were very, very strong all the way through the fight. But when you're a, a fatigued, tired fighter that's giving you all physically and mentally, and you get hit with a shot like that, there's no coming back. Jeremy Moore was, was well ahead on two of the three scorecards. One scorecard was, was level. Would you have seen it that way, Ricky? Um, yeah, you know, it, you could have a case for that very much so. You know, I just think uh, Matthew was just... His work rate was just, like, un, unstoppable. It was, it was... I mean, I've got a good work rate, but I think Matthew took it off the rector scale, you know, to... Uh, today, but yeah, I mean, you can't you can't argue with Jamie being front either because it was such a close fight. The rounds were so so close. You know, it was either you look at the quality or you look at the work rate. You know, uh, and Matthew Macklin showed some good quality at times, but Jamie just showed that little bit of cuteness. We're all keen to know how, how Matthew Macklin is. We we can shed a little bit more light on it now. Uh, Adam Smith can uh, can bring us up today. Adam. Well, that's it, Dave. Uh, I'm in Matthew Macklin's uh, dressing room after that huge effort he put in tonight. He's, uh, he's now been uh, transferred to the Hope Hospital in Salford with the very best uh, medical care. Billy Graham, his trainer, has, uh, has gone with him, as has his uh, dad and brother, Seamus. Uh, we wish him well. The, uh, the encouraging news is that Kerry Kayes' conditioner, uh, we just had a word with him, and he said that Matthew was uh, sitting up in the ambulance and, uh, and he was talking. So, so that's an encouraging sign, but uh, obviously See, our thoughts are with uh, Matthew Macklin after what was such a brutal fight, Dave. It was, and we'll, we'll continue to keep you uh, up to date of his, uh, his condition as he uh, makes his way to hospital. We'll bring you uh, more from Manchester in just a couple of moments' time.